Hello everybody, this is Fernando for the latest Cryptids and Monsters video. Alright, let's go ahead and let's do another entry here. This one yet again based on one of your newer suggestions. This one, a brand new one, I have not seen this one suggested in the past. So when I looked at the information, it was a breath of fresh air because normally a lot of these cryptids that I talk about, there's some doom and gloom associated with them, like they're bad cryptids, stuff that you don't want to necessarily run into at all in this world but in reading this information this is a cryptid that can actually be very helpful as long as let's say you follow certain guidelines and if you do so then you can be rewarded pretty handsomely so this is a very very fascinating cryptid so it has to do with this you're looking at it now Maybe it's the fact that it looks like a goldish bird that just makes it much more, I guess, uplifting and inspiring. But it goes by this name. It's known as the Ali Kanto. So let's go ahead and let's talk about all the information associated with this cryptid that is one of the good ones. This is definitely one that you want to meet provided under certain circumstances. So what is this Ali Kanto? Well, essentially, it's a regular bird, regular-sized bird, although apparently in some iterations it can be much, much larger. But in most cases, it seems to be just a regular-sized bird that happens to be there in Chile. So if you're in that area and you happen to be across some mines or some caves, specifically there in Chile, then you're in a good area to meet this creature. However, you have to do so at night. That's what makes it very fascinating, first off, because a lot of times birds just simply just stay, uh, let's say, asleep at night. They don't go out, especially because of other predators out there. Maybe some do, but who knows. But in this case, this bird is exclusively nocturnal so you can only spot it at night but it won't be that hard to spot at night because let's talk about its physical characteristics first off there's that goldish hue associated with it like it has this beautiful absolutely just beautiful metallic color emanating from it um, there's a very distinct reason for that and I'll explain that here in a minute but yes this color is so beautiful so metallic it's so luminescent that it almost it's like it's emanating its own light itself and of course with the moonlight hitting on it too it just makes it seem so much more uh, brighter than it is. So imagine a site like this. That's what I was mentioning earlier. Looking at something like this, it's like uplifting. You see birds, first off, are very beautiful as is. Uh, they're just, just, just so beautiful to look at and then to hear as well. Never really quite understood the fascination with um, 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 shooting um, birds or keeping them, uh, let's say, within a cage. Uh, they're just, they just should be left, in my opinion, just free, just roaming out there as is. But in any case, imagine something like this, just so so beautiful uh, flying out through the night it's it's metallic hue shining off in this case from the moonlight and also its eyes apparently emanate these strange beautiful lights too you can just imagine it in the blackest of darkest of nights just leaving this light trail behind it so uh, it's one of those things where if you look at it you just happen to see of course all this brightness associated with it it should leave especially against the backdrop of let's say the darkest night it should leave like a trail behind it that's why uh, it's 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 something that's uh, very very uh, interesting to look at you basically just cannot look away thereafter and it's supposed to be very good luck when you see it there in Chile and this is the reason why that goldish hue that metallic hue to it is not there by accident this is a creature that apparently feeds on one thing and that is gold or in some other cases also silver but it's supposed to feed on gold primarily it, it finds gold it eats it and somehow that gold transports itself into the bird's body so that's why it has that very specific metallic hue to it or maybe it rubs off onto it as well and when i was reading this information i just couldn't help but uh, realize and remember the story of smog in that case from the hobbit how smog surrounded himself with all that precious jewelry and then just by the passage of time it became part of him 
of course, on the underbelly, too. So imagine something like this, this alicanto, this beautiful bird, spending so much time around gold, and in some cases, jewelry, that it just rubs off into its body. And when that happens, these feathers, they're just completely coated with it. They have this golden glow as well. Sometimes even there's uh, diamonds or some other type of precious stones that if this creature finds, it will be more than happy to eat those, too. That's why it's considered very, very good luck for the miners because if they see one of these alicantos let's say flying about at night then they know that there's a presence of something valuable nearby gold jewelry silver whatever is the case it is nearby it's kind of it reminded me of those stories too about how when you're out at sea and you happen to see a bird specifically then you're in good territory because there should be nearby land as well but as far as the good luck yes Yes, it can continue if you let this Alicanto not see you. So let's say you're one of those miners there in Chile and you happen to see this thing. You better make sure that it does not see you as well because this creature will then either fiercely protect its territory or it'll actually try to divert you into more dangerous areas. So if, if this Alicanto spots you looking at it, it knows that you want its treasure. It wants that gold that this creature is surrounded with. When that happens, it'll lead you uh, thinking that you're, you know, you're thinking, oh, great, I'm going to go find that pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. However, this Alicanto will instead lead you to a cliff basically to an area like in the dark that you can't see and then all of a sudden there you are falling off the cliff or some kind of deep ravine ravine something where um, again you're not going to know the area you're surrounded with and then too little too late you're suddenly plummeting to your death and in other cases the alicanto itself will start attacking you and pushing you towards that specific dangerous spot if if you realize you know wait a minute you know there's something else beyond this that I don't want to go into, then the Salicanto will do that for you. So good luck only ends up to the point that this creature sees you. However, on the reverse side, if this creature somehow can detect, this Alicanto knows that, let's say, you can find gold. Again, this thing feeds on gold and then other type of precious metals as well. So if it realizes that you are a good purveyor of gold and you have that trick, that magic trick to be able to find all those precious metals, then it in turn will allow you to take it to it. So it's not going to attack you. It's not going to do anything bad to you. Instead, it will help you in terms of finding the gold and it'll help you find other gold, maybe nearby too. Probably it has some kind of the tracking or something within it that'll that some sensor or something that'll allow it to find other spots of gold you know how gold is just not in one place uh, miners will look throughout an entire area looking for those little pockets of gold so imagine something like this doing that as well and it'll share that gold with you because of the success because of you finding the original gold and then it in turn finding surrounding gold around that area so that's why in, in those cases that's another uh, instance of good luck but that's pretty much it that's all the information associated with this golden creature this alicanto this cryptid there located there in the caves and mines of chile if anybody knows any more info there from a local standpoint, it'd be great to hear. Wouldn't this be something that you would want to find out there? I mean, this is something where this can change lives. Imagine if you're out there, you're a poor, in this case, miner there in Chile. You happen to see one of these creatures in a distance, making sure, of course, that you're not going to be found out by this cryptid but you happen to come across then all these precious metals and jewels this could be something that could lead to a, a just a whole different life or in turn if you help out this alicanto it'll in turn help you out as well so quite a difference again from some of the other doom and gloom cryptids that we've covered in the past here this is absolutely one that you want to find uh, for yourself too so but yes if anyone has any more info anything else i might have missed please post those comments below i'm having so much fun too right now that i think this is like video number 10 now on this uh, new series so i'm just going to keep continuing because uh with regards to these cryptids a lot of great suggestions a lot of interesting ones too 
So why, why, you know, why close it? Uh, why stop it? In other words, I'm just going to continue going thereafter. So be on the lookout for more videos, probably towards uh, after Christmas or so. And then that way we'll just, uh, I'll be able to just hit them hard thereafter. So, all right, everybody. Thanks again as always. Take care.